it's Muzafar Umarov here from Umarov Racing. Today uh, I'm installing a new part to the car. I've been waiting for this part for a while, more than a month ago. And due to my bad luck, the item was out of stock and it was just between the batches. Let me show you what I got. This is the uh, Peters Motorsport in the rear sway bar. It's 19 millimeter chromoly steel. It's three-way adjustable. Jim from Peters Motorsport said soft setting is the outside, medium is the inside, and you can use both to get the, like, the full stiffness. Comes with these protein motion control sway bar bushings. We're going to be installing there. I have jacked up the car. I put the wheel shocks in the front wheels and just raised them up. Have them on jack stand. I have these jack stand pads that I'm using and I have a jack to raise up from this, from the rear. I have the jack as a backup in case, you know, something happens. It's still holding up the weight of the car, but the most of the weight is held by the jack stands. For this, it did not come with any directions. So I read the directions from other people who have gotten the white line, and I think the white line is the other one. And they've used, I think, the 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter socket. And I'm gonna show you how I'll be kind of changing it. So I'll grab a 14 millimeter and a 17. And then for now, I think that's about it. Let's go take out the stock one. So the factory sway bar is over here. It's connected to by those bushings. And I'm going to be disconnecting those two bolts. And let's put this one over here. Got that out of the way. All right, so I'll take out this one over here. You, we need to use a 17 inch wrench here. And we need to get that end link out. If you have a large wrench like this, it helps to go all the way to the end here. And you can go back to it again. If you don't do it all the way, it's harder to get, get in from the bottom. So, so I got this the end link out. There's this bolt, which is uh, 17 millimeters. So you need like an open end wrench and 8.6 hex, like this wrench tip. So I had to hold the inside of that bolt because it kept on rotating. So if you can hold it, you can usually stick it in between the suspension. Once you take off the bushings, it's easy to kind of move it around and you can kind of stick this in and hold it and the bolt will come right off. Okay, unsurprisingly, the bolt on the other side came right off. And here's the difference between the two sway bars. So the factory bushing. So I'm gonna install the, the protein bushings and apply generous amount of lubrication. There, there's provided grease in there. Here's the bushing, here's the lube, apply good amount of it that was recommended by Jim from Pierce Motorsports. This is how the car looks without a rear sway bar. Looks empty. Kind of want to drive it for sits and giggles, but I want to finish this up so I can install the rally armor and mud flaps. But I bet you <laughs> if I push the car, it will understeer a lot. So, all right, let's get this installed. I'm going to put some gloves on, lubricate this, and prepare it. I applied a generous amount of lubrication on this, on the bushing. So hopefully there should be no squeaking or anything. So time to install the sway bar now. So I'm gonna probably just start by putting the bushing uh, bolts on, kind of align them properly, and then put the end links. Jay said to use the outer ones. I think the outer ones are the softest setting, uh, but also I think it might fit the best. If you compare it to the stock one, the distance is about the same. Maybe it's a little bit shorter, but I think once I get adjustable end links for the rear, it'll be much easier to put it on the more stiffer one. So I finished installing the Pierce Motorsports sway bar and I will show you how it looks like. So here you go. This is with the, with the bushing that they provide. So I put it on the, the softest one. So the outer hole and the inside hole would be like medium, like I said earlier. Here with a, uh, definitely enough lubrication. So I'm going to go and install the, the rally armor mud flaps. But for this video, this is it. One thing I would recommend as far as installing, like I couldn't record everything because I, did, I didn't put the, uh, the GoPro mounts to my head, but I can tell you some tips. I think first, to tell you how I did it. Uh, I didn't show it because I didn't put the GoPro mount to my head. But the way I did it is I put through the, the end link holes, like the, I put them, didn't tighten the, the nuts. Then I put the the bushing, the bushing, and I put the, the the bolts by hand first on both sides. Didn't tighten them, and once they were all in by hand as much as I can, then I tightened them with a wrench, and then I put end link bolts by hand again, and then with an opening wrench, finished it up. 
I didn't have to secure it from the other end when I'm turning. It kind of like went in on its own and locked in. Other than that, this was pretty easy install. If you're not recording a video and you know exactly what tools to use. Yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is the first time I installed uh, sway bars in the rear. It was pretty simple. I think the fronts are a lot more complex, but I'm not gonna be touching the fronts because I just wanted to stiffen the rear one up. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video where I'm installing the rally armor with flaps.